We're live at Tiger Stadium ahead of the highly anticipated battle on the river football matchup. The Humble Fighting Tigers versus the Destrehan Fighting Wildcats. Good evening, everyone. I'm Hayden Garrett. And I'm Nari Hines. So, Nari, what do you think about the atmosphere so far right now? I mean, I'm not going to lie to you, Hayden. It seems like both schools have drawn up pretty large crowds on both sides. I agree with that because, to me, the Battle of the River game is one of the most anticipated games in all the state of Louisiana. Oh, yeah, it seems very important. You know, this, this rivalry that's been going on this whole week, it's been real serious. I really, I agree with that. Yep. Let's take a look at the stats so far. Destrehan remains undefeated, winning all three games played since the start of the regular season. Meanwhile, Honvo is 1-2 and two right now, losing their first two games against Newman and Mandeville. But they won their last week's game against North Shore High School with a score of 22-17. to 17. It's still an early season, so there's still time for the Tigers to rise back up tonight and could be that night for them. Both teams have been working hard all week to prepare for tonight's game. Advanced TV broadcasting team members Connor Beard and Kara Frangella spoke with the coaches and players to find out how they plan to come out on top. The Battle on the River game, a highly anticipated rivalry between Hanville and Destran High Schools, begins tonight. The last Hanville victory in the annual game was in 2017. This year, however, Hanville's head coach, Daniel Laquette, is very confident in his team. I tell you what, this is a really good group. This is the first group uh, that I've coached for all four years. I think we got some really good leadership in this group. Uh, a lot of fight. Got some young guys who are still learning some things, but I'm very excited about how we approach practice, how we approach, uh, you know, every aspect of what we're trying to get accomplished. And directly involved in the team's preparations, Hanville's wide receiver Kenny Moore is getting in the right mindset to take on the Wildcats. Playing physical, playing aggressive, going 100% every time. We do our responsibilities, fulfill our role, just play how we're supposed to, really. Meanwhile, Destrehan's head football coach, Marcus Scott, says his team won't let Hanville's confidence get into their heads. His players are focused on self-improvement. Well, we have to stay positive. I mean, a lot of times uh, bad things happen in the course of a game because Hornville is a good team and a good program, so they're going to make some good plays, and, and we just have to stay positive and stay together, and, and you know, we'll, we'll get through it. And to keep up with the good plays that Coach Guy is predicting, Destran linebacker Samaj Walker says he has been reviewing Hornville's past games in order to plan his approach. We look forward to playing Hornville throughout the season. I like to watch film about the, uh, about the teams we're about to play so I can prepare myself. I like to estimate my tackles, how many tackles I want to get. Tune in tonight at 7 for one of the biggest games of the season, where it will soon be revealed if each team's efforts pay off. The players and coaches from both teams are really looking forward to a fun rivalry game tonight. And that's what really matters to these players, most who are playing their final battle on the river game of their high school careers. ATVB team members Kaylee Paternostro and Jayon Wells spoke with two senior athletes about the genuine love they have for their sport and their teams. The annual Battle on the River football game always brings a divisive energy from Hornville and Destrehan High Schools. But for the seniors on both teams, there's one feeling that can be shared, better sweetness as they play their final rivalry matchup on September 22nd at Tiger Stadium. Shane Lee is a running back on Destrehan's football team. He's a two-star athlete, also playing for the school's baseball team. His coaches say he's one of their strongest athletes and he knows a lot about football itself. Being here for four years is like, it's amazing, you know, being around the same coaches for the last four years. It helped me grow to be the man I am right now and a better football player too. And one of the coaches he has worked closest with in these four years, Destrehan head coach Marcus Scott. Scott has also been with the Fighting Wildcats for over the past four years, leading them to seven championships. He says he is looking forward to seeing how Lee performs during his last year on the team. Yeah, well, Shane is an outstanding person, first and foremost. He's very dependable. You know, we, we know that, uh, you know, we have a sophomore quarterback this year, and. Um, you know, he provides kind of a, some, some comfort for, for a young kid, you know, behind center. 
Meanwhile, on the other side of the river, Hornville is also strengthening their team with each practice. The team's running back, Chase Brooks, won the toughest Tiger Award last year for being outstandingly fast. His accomplishment is now displayed in the Tigers' weightlifting room along with other star players of the past. The team made me feel like a brotherhood, like we all brothers. We all connected in some way. We all, all got a good bond with each other, and that's how we play with each other on the field. Hornville's head football coach, Daniel Luquette, has been leading the team since 2020. He says Brooks is a person who brings a great vibe to their team both on and off the field. Chase is a unique kid, man. I, I, I love Chase. You know, one of the things that he always brings is a, is a vibrant, excited uh, demeanor to practice. You know, he's fast, he's, he's physical, um, knows the game, but most of all, he's a horrible tiger. He's been a horrible tiger. No matter the outcome of this battle on the river matchup at Tiger Stadium, these seniors are eager for a final football season with the teams they call family. Both Chase Brooks and Shane Lee say they are thankful for their family and their teams for helping them end up where they are now. And we're sure both of them will be, will be giving it their all tonight when they take the field. And we'll be getting all of it live from kickoff at 7 all the way to the end of the game. We have a lot in store tonight. The rivalry matchup, the pink links reveal, spirit group performances, and so much more. You can watch it all on with us at PressPlay.tv. Our student crew will be giving you that coverage the entire night. Coming up on PressPlay Productions pregame coverage of the Battle on the River football game, we take a look at how the students of both schools plan to keep spirits high tonight. We'll be right back. Three, two, one. Come over to the Satellite Center where collaboration meets creativity. No matter your interest, we have a spot for you. There are five different pathways, including a variety of courses that you can take. Over at the LaFon Performing Arts Center, the arts, technology, and communication pathway focuses on digital media as well as visual and performative arts. And at the main Satellite Center campus, the health science courses are geared towards recognizing, treating, and managing patient and medical needs in various situations. For those interested in the service industry, the hospitality and tourism pathway provides a hands-on approach to fine dining, cultural leadership, and tourism. Or you can immerse yourself in the world of STEM with our applied science courses, where you can design, build, and operate electrical and mechanical systems. If you have a passion for learning and passing on knowledge, help mold our future generations and our educators rising course. Whether you love one pathway or them all, the Satellite Center can help you build a better you. To learn more about how you can get involved, visit the Satellite Center's website or follow us on social media. Don't miss out on any of the academic, athletic, and artistic moments your school has to offer. Make sure to follow your school's Instagram as well as the account of our district. You and I, we are St. Charles Parish Public Schools. Productions pregame of the Battle on the River matchup, Hanville versus Destrahan. I'm Nari Hines. And I'm Hayden Garrick. Before the break, we showed you all about how both teams have been preparing all week for tonight, but they haven't been the only ones. The Destrahan and Hanville spirit groups are also ready to work hard tonight, putting their heart and energy into their performances. ATV team members Tyra Martin, Amelia Ramirez, and Alora Robichaux shows us how many of the groups going to show up to show out. Battle on the River. The rivalry football game between Hallville and Destrehan High School has been having fans excited for decades. Each year brings a crowd filled with excitement, not just from the students, but even community members. But while the game is going on, 
It's the spirit groups that are in charge of keeping that energy alive for the crowds as well as the players. <laughs> Destro Head Jr. Hayden Stoop is the marching band's drum major. His key role is to direct and lead the band throughout the game and during their halftime performances. We are the, the spirit and the life that goes behind them. Uh, there are times in the football games where the football team is tired and exhausted and then we start playing and they feel so energized and they're ready to get back into the game and ready to put more energy out. Not only is Stute anticipating the Battle on the River football game, but so is Sophie Trudy, the Hallville Marching Band's drum major. Trudy says it's important that the band performs for all spirit groups, not just the football team. A lot of the time, we'll end up cheering for the cheer team and the dance team because they're just doing magnificently. So we all just kind of work together and it creates much more positive environment for the football games and just it makes it so much more fun. In addition to collaboration with other spirit groups, it is also important to connect inside your own team. As both captains of the Destiny Darlings, singers Carly Johnson and Brianne Rubichaud believe it is essential to the overall experience of football games. Just being able to share the field with our team and also just being able to lead them and help them, help them reach our goals. Yeah, and being able to bond our team is just such a great feeling to feel like a family and being able to like control that and do like team bonding exercises is really fun. And on the track, Hallville's cheerleaders plan to make sure everyone is connected during this rivalry football game, including the crowd. Cheer captain Olivia Downs, who is in her senior year of cheering at football games, says that connection is her group's top priority. We really are cheering for every part of that, which I feel like is so important because it's not just it's not just football players that is happening like during a football game. Like it is the student section, it is the high steppers in the band, and I feel like cheerleading really. Since it cheers for everyone, it really just connects everyone together. Despite the battle on the field between the two schools, there's one thing bringing them together. Hard work, dedication, and teamwork. The love for these spirit groups are just as strong as the football teams. They're together every single Friday night supporting each other. And their time on the road cannot match the feelings of playing at home in St. Charles Parish with their family and friends showing up to cheer them on. Hayden and I want to show you just how valuable each student section is for these football teams. On September 22nd, the Hanville and Destra and High School football teams will face off at Tiger Stadium. And while the players are getting ready for the game, the student sections will be too. These groups of fans bring so much energy, creating an enthusiastic atmosphere every Friday night. And it's not just as simple as showing up each week. There's more coordination involved, specifically from the student councils of each school. District Hand Student Council President Cameron Boyne says making posters and themes for the student sections is all part of their efforts to amp up that energy. Oh, the rivalry between Hanville and Destrian, Hand, it's like, there's nothing else like it really. It's something that gets the parish all together. Everyone comes out for that game. It's just different than anything else that we have at Destrian. Hand. And the same goes for Hanville. Student Council President Madison Thomas says the preparation before each game is key to keeping things fun and the spirits high. There is also a unique kind of energy that rolls around during rivalry week, energy that cannot be compared. I hope to see at the game an atmosphere of students having fun, most importantly, but also to this sense of pride of our school and also to support of our classmates that will be on the field. And when the Friday night, night lights hit the field, the students are grouped up and ready to support their team. It's something they believe can change the course of the game. If I had to describe the energy in the student session, it's very lively, um, fun, kind of hectic, but you know, we all, we all do our thing. The rivalry between Destrehan and Hanville is, I mean, massive, obviously, and it is definitely hypes up the game. Keep everyone in a nice way, doesn't like each other. <laughs> so we all got to be motivated and try to show out bigger than the other team. While the schools are rooting against each other, there's one thing they can all agree on. The height between both schools and the proximity makes this rivalry like none other. We still have So we need more coverage. We'll be right back. Choose what you love at the LaFon Arts Center this season. Do you love our concerts? How 
about our tribute artist. Or maybe our family program. Choose the series that fits you. Or become a subscriber and get our concert, legends, and movement series for the best deal around. Don't miss America's Got Talent favorite, Sons of Serendip. I loved it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful voice you have. Ailey Hughes. Or Tony Award winning musical, Come From Away. Choose the shows you love and purchase your tickets today. We'll see you at the center. When disaster strikes, United Way of St. Charles is here to help. From the disasters that make the news, like COVID, Hurricane Ida, and tornadoes, to the quiet disasters happening all around us every day, like cancer, mental health challenges, poverty, hunger, and inflation. Thanks to the generosity of our donors, United Way responds to them all. The day of August 31st, it was horrible. Uh, my, my house was just destroyed. I just took one day at a time. God told me, you will recover from this Hurricane Ida. Every one of them that came in this home showed love, they showed caring, they was awesome. It was just like a big old family. And I want to thank United Way because Janani Way didn't have to do the things that they did for me. The day the tornadoes hit, as the window blew out of my car, I realized something really is going going on. But we did get a chance to get here, it was just totally destroyed. We actually later on found out that we lost one of our neighbors. She lost her life. But you know, all I could see was just destruction everywhere. Our homes had been turned over, vehicles flipped over. Yeah, well, my home was just uh, dis destroyed. A great help that 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 yeah, and myself and my neighbors are still uh, appreciative of was how uh, United Way came in and actually provided places for us to live. So this has been my first time actually having to been on the receiving end of the services. So that's why I'm grateful to kind of be saying this to let you know that hey, it really really works. I needed it, and then you were here. Really appreciate the United Way uh, for donating our resources until we can get on our feet. Something I never forget the rest of my life. We made it through, so we're still fighting, but we, we, we see the light, we're looking positive, so uh, we really appreciate everything, and we, we, we're gonna move forward. When COVID first started, uh, I lost my child of 14 years. My husband was disabled, he worked construction. Uh, circumstances came about to where we started raising our nine-year-old granddaughter. Coming here just really really helped us out because we had never been on any kind of food stamps or anything like that. I mean, the people, they're, they're absolutely wonderful here. I'm forever grateful for what they do. Everybody has a story and everybody's going through something. And we just need to be kinder to each other. In 2019, my husband got diagnosed with cancer. In August 5th of 22, he died. I woke up one morning and I had nothing to do and I had no purpose, I had no new normal. I, I tell them all the time, they saved my life coming a year. They, it gave me purpose. It gave me uh, a new normal. It's a big family. So there's a lot of people that comes. People need this help, really do, because groceries are very high right now. I look forward to this like it's a part of my life. It's been life changing for me. And it's been, I sleep good at night. I, I know I'm making a difference and it's just been very rewarding. Creative Family Solutions has helped our family. We could tell something was off with our child because she was having difficulty social-wise. Figuring out what her needs were and to help her move forward with her life, they hit the nail on the head with finding out what is going on with her deep down inside. There's not many places in St. Charles Parish that you can go get counseling help for your child that's right by your home. So it feels good to know that there are still people out there willing to help others in our community to better their lives. We all have a story of need, either for ourselves or someone we know. These could be big, natural disasters, but more often, it's quiet, personal ones. It's the family that lost jobs and are looking for food. The parent doing the best they can who is seeking counseling for their child. The widow searching for purpose 
after losing her best friend. These are our family members, neighbors, co-workers, and friends that need your help. But I would encourage you to keep giving because it, it makes a difference. It gives people hope. Uh, it just shows that the community does care and we try to just get all the resources together to change lives. And, it, and, and you really do. Believe me, the money went where it was supposed to go at. And it helped out a lot of people, uh, my family and other families uh, in this area. We all at some point in life need help. And it's wonderful that they have organizations like this and, and people like this that care enough to help other people. I've always donated to United Way, but I never really got involved in either program. So this has just been an, an unbelievable experience. I hope and I pray that y'all always get donation for this great foundation because United Way is the way. Since 1955, through your support, United Way of St. Charles has provided help when disaster strikes. We need your help today, too. Welcome back. The countdown is on for the annual Battle of the River football game. We're only a couple more minutes away. While the actual game is something that everyone is excited for, there's also something else we're all looking forward to seeing tonight. The reveal of which side of the river won the Pink Links campaign this year. We're joined with fellow Satellite Center team member, Janiah Milton, who's in the medical assistant course. Their class, along with the patient care and human body systems classes, have been leading the Pink Links campaign. Thank you for joining us, Janiah. I'm glad to be here. So, Janiah. How do you, I would not say how, I would say what does health science do? Um, so we're basically like, okay, for my class, medical assistant, it's a year-round class. It's helping us prepare to basically go out into the real world for like the future nurses and people that want to learn about the body, basically. And I can get certified for it. I can take a certification test at the end of the year. Um, I know for patient care, you can get certified in EKG. And then in health science, I think you're basically just learning about the body, like the functions, the skull, everything else about it, yeah. So, Janiah, Pink Links is always a fun competition, but it's much bigger than that. Who benefits from the money raised during this campaign? Uh, I'll have to say, um, you, wait, can you repeat the question again? Who benefits from the money raised during this campaign? Uh, breast cancer, the breast cancer awareness benefit, we're basically raising money so they can be able to like, there's like different things like there's transportation for them to get to, to get to their little medical thing, their, chem, their chemo thing. Um, there's a medic, there's the money also goes to the wigs that they have for hair loss, things like that. So Janiah, we have a big, we have a big reveal coming up during halftime tonight. Can you tell us how much people need to raise on both sides? Well, so far, I know we raised 3000 all together, but Ms. Robichaud wants it to be a surprise, so I don't really know who's winning right now or who's going to be in the lead. So we all got to know, I guess, during halftime, who really going to win. I mean, but it, it came close, but I think Hornville got it. Hornville got it, yeah. Go win. Thank you for joining us, Shania. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. It's so great to see the communities from both sides of the river coming together to support a great cause, breast cancer research. We'll see you on the field tonight during halftime. All right, so we're just minutes away from kickoff, which gets started at 7 tonight. Our crew, Press Play Productions, will have complete live coverage of the game right here on PressThePlay.tv. We're looking forward to a great game from both teams. We want to wish both Holmville and Destraham football players and their coaches good luck tonight. That's it for us for now. We'll be back with you all doing play-by-play -play and color commentary from the press box in just a couple minutes. We'll be back.
It's in progress. fans, the Tigers are ready. Are you ready? Tonight is presented by Hornwell High Junior ROTC LA 933.
Number three being Chase Morales, number 11 being Ryan Gregson, number five being Ryan Simmons, and number nine being Calvin Smith. And for the Destrian side, their team captains being number seven, 30, one, and 14. Number seven. Number seven being Ty Terrell. Number 30 being Mohamed Murtaza. Number one being McKaylin Smothers, and number 14 being Braden Fernity. And it looks like Humble has deferred to the second half, so Destrahan will receive the ball to begin the game.
to me, it can go both ways because getting the ball first isn't what you normally want. But if you do get the offense first, you can put huge momentum on your side. If you score an opening drive touchdown, if you score an opening drive touchdown, that can put a lot of momentum onto the side, onto the offensive side, and that will encourage the defense to come out and play a lot harder. The defensive side's got a lot of pressure like that, ATM, because coming out and having to stand up against this amazing Destrehan's offense, it's going to be a challenge for Hombo. But let's see if they can do it. Number five, Ryan Sp Simmons on special teams with a good read of where the, where the returner was going and tackled them. And they will be down at the eight yard line. Is it the eight yard line? It is the 10 yard line, scratch that, Scr 10 yard line. The Wildcats have 90 yards to go if they want to score a touchdown here. Let's see if they can do it. It seems like the Humboldt Tigers are in a zone defense here. Yeah, it's, and this is one of the most highly anticipated games of the year. That was a good run by number four, being Shane Lee. He's one of the heart and souls on this Destrehan offense. Yeah, it'll be a third and one for the district Wildcats. Basically, what they could do is just run like a little QB sneak and possibly get the first down here. Let's see if they'll hand it off to Shane Lee again. It'll be back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back touches for him to start off the series. That hurts the district offense now. puts them back five yards, which means it's going to be tough for them to run, so they might have to pass here. Looks like Hanvo's playing a zone defense. That was a good throw by Jackson Fields to Johnny Thiel, the fourth. That was a good catch and run, gaining, extra gaining about five yards. It'll be first and 10 for the Wildcats at the 40 yard line. What a throw by Jackson Fields to Jabari Mack. A throw and catch. It was a chunk play, and it was a good executed post route by, by the receiver. It would now be first and goal for the Wildcats. They were inching their way towards the end zone. Will they get the first strike? Looks like it's going to be a touchdown for the Wildcats. There you go, man. First score on the board is the Wildcats. 
And see, just like that, the Destro Howe Wildcats had driven down the field for 90 yards on the opening drive. That puts a whole bunch of momentum on the Destro hand side because now the defense, realizing that their team is up, they will come out and play even harder knowing that their team is on the momentum side. Yeah, Hayden, we were talking about the momentum earlier, and this could be a game killer or it could not be, but we'll see. And there's the kick, and it's through the uprights. It will now be 7 nothing, Wildcats over the Tigers. Hayden, I think the Wildcats really adapted that uh, drive there. They were running game was good, but they set themselves back and adapted to throw the ball downfield, and it turned out greatly for them. Yes, it did. It seems like Hall, not Hallville. It seems like Destrehan has come into Hallville's football Tiger Stadium and ignoring the Hallville crowd and goes right down the field and scores an opening drive touchdown. Yeah, they go right to business. No playing around there. But I am excited to see Hallville's defense response to that play. Um, Hallville's defense has been the stronger side of the field this year, and I'm excited to see what they do. Let's see if Homo's offense can respond to that amazing opening drive by the Destrehan Wildcats. And as we get ready for the kick, there's the kick. It's high and long. Looks like Homeville is going to receive to return it. Oh, and he's going to break free a little bit, but shortly brought down just short of the 20-yard line. It will now be first and ten for the Homo Tigers, and let's see if they can come out on the field and do the exact same thing the Wildcats did, or will the Wildcats stop them right here to get even more momentum on their side? Hayden, I know we talked about the spirit groups and their preseason or uh, pre-game coverage, but they are really coming out tonight. I want to give props to them. Uh, yeah, I agree with that, Etienne. Both sides, Destran and Homeville student sections, cheerleaders are coming ready to support their team and bring that energy towards the student sections. Well, let's see if they can cheer them on here as Homeville takes the field. There's the snap. Looks like he's going to hand it off, but quickly wrapped up by Destrehan's defense. That was a good play by number 91 being Jiren McCall. Good defensive stop, a loss of four. Scratch that, loss of three on the play. It would not be second and 13 to go. Looks like he really read that offensive line there and went straight for the kill. I mean, that was read perfectly and executed perfectly. Yes, it was, ATN. It seems like the Destiny Wildcats are in a man-to-man -man defense. Second and long for Hornville here is man in motion. He's going to snap. Oh, flag on the play. Or Looks like it's going to be a false start in the Hallmill Tigers. That will push them back even more, which makes it a longer, longer second down for the Hallmill Tigers. As we talked about for Dashtran, that's going to be a momentum killer right there. They were already put back, and now they're putting back even further. So, Yeah, Dashtran so far has nothing to worry about, but never know. Hallmill could pull out a couple of strings and get a first down here, but so far Dashtran is liking what's going on right now on defense. He's going to keep it, and that's almost a pick for Destrehan right there. That was almost really bad. Yeah, it was supposed to be a little draw play to, or a little out route to number zero, but number five on the defense, number five being Anthony Robinson in the third, reading that play perfectly and almost coming up with a pick. 
That was great coverage by Anthony right there. He really read the quarterback, got in between the receiver, and almost picked it off. It looks like the Destrian Wildcats will be playing another man defense. As they get ready for the snap. Ryan Gregson receiving the snap this time, keeping it. Looks like he's going to pass it, but there's pressure, real pressure, and he's going to be brought down. Man, this Destrahan defense has come ready to play because, like I said, the Destrahan defense is now having a lot of momentum on the side knowing that their offense scored a touchdown, which means that doesn't put so much pressure on the defense. Uh, the Destrahan defense is really putting some pressure on that offense now. It will now be fourth and long for the Humble Tigers. Destrahan defense almost being able to back the Hornville offense all the way back into their own end zone here. I, if I was Hornville's offense, I would start to consider my options. Right now, the Hornville team is backed up all the way. The punter is backed up all the way to the end of the end zone. This could be a chance to where Destrahan could block the punt and potentially get more points out of it. I like your optimism there, Hayden, but we'll see here shortly. And there's the kick. Looks like it's going to go off high and short. Hayden, if I was Hornville's punt return team, that is not what I was hoping for. They practically handed Destrahan's offense the ball in their own end zone. Yeah, but you just got to give props to at least uh, the punter punt the ball on time because... Uh, the defensive pe the people on the edges of the special teams were oh so close to blocking that punt. That could potentially have been a safety or another touchdown. But yeah, Destrahan does have the ball only 16 yards away. If they can do it 90 yards, they can pr pr they can definitely do it 16 yards. They also have plenty of leeway here as their first down is short of the goal. So they will have fun with this one as they're ready for the snap. False start on Destrahan though. That's going to be tough. I don't think that's going to hold back the Destrahan offense here, but it's going to hurt them a little bit. If Destrahan can score here on this drive, that will put way more momentum on Destrahan's side than what Hanva wants. Hanva doesn't want any momentum on the Destrahan side, but the Destrahan side wants all the momentum. And so far, Destrahan has all the momentum here. Looks like they tried to run the ball there, but it was quickly brought down just short. Looks like it's going to be second and 12 for the Wildcats. As they're getting ready for the snap. Nope, man in motion. Oh, there's a snap. Going to drop back to pass it. And he throws. And that's another touchdown. That was an amazing catch. What a play right there. That was a good throw and catch by Jackson Fields to Craig Wilford. What a snag. Basically mossed the defender. That was a great touchdown for Desterhan there, but that's got to be a momentum killer for Hanville. Yeah, so far Hanville's defense is not looking too good, giving up two touchdowns back to back. Not looking so good for the Humble Tigers, but on the Destrian side, looking amazing. This is exactly what they want at ATN. Well, I'm excited to see how Hornville's defense and offense bounces back from this. As they kick, and it's going to be good. 14 to nothing, the Destrian fighting Wildcats over the Dest not Destrian, Hornville fighting Tigers. Let's take a moment to discuss last year's opponent, last year's rivalry match between Destrian and Hallville. Both Coach Laquette and Coach Scott went to the game, of course, these are the coaches, went to the game and it was six o'clock and the parking lots and the student sections were already filled with the students. That just shows how anticipated and how great of a matchup this game is. 
Yes, Hayden, as these two schools' proximity and culture, this game is one of the most anticipated games in, in the state, I would say. This is a big rivalry here, and I'm excited to see how it plays out. As Destrehan gets ready to give the ball back to Hawnville. And there's the kick. It's high but long. Hawnville's going to choose to run it. Straight up the middle, breaking free from a couple, but brought down just short of 30. So Hawnville's got a little better field position here, but last time they couldn't capitalize on the opening drive touchdown from Destrehan. So we'll see if they can capitalize on the two opening drive touchdowns from Destrehan. Even though Destrehan is up 14-0, the Humble High School school spirit is still showing up. Even though down 14-0, they're still, they're still going to cheer on their team because it's their school. Like, how could they not? First and 10 for the Tigers here. Ryan Gregson gets ready to receive the ball. There's a snap. Looks like he's going to hand it off. And there's a lot. Oh, looks like he's going to run it out of bounds. Only a gain of a, about one or two yards right there. It was supposed to be an HP stretch play, but didn't work out for the Humble Tigers. It will be second and eight. Second and eight here for the Hornville Tigers. Hayden, what do you think the Hornville is trying to do to build back momentum? I think they got to execute their, execute their plays better because right now it's just mm, not looking so good for the Hornville Tigers right now. But as we can see here on the play, it's a snap. It's a roll out to the left. Oh, I think that might be a fumble. No. Uh, looks like he was trying to go downfield with it, so it won't be a fumble there. Yeah, it looks like it's incompletion, so Home of the Tigers catch a break because that would have put even more momentum on the Destrehan side if that would have been a fumble. Destrehan does not need any more momentum here. As the Wildcats are coming out here strong and Hornville taking a slow approach to this game. Hornville's got to execute their plays more and slowly drive down the field. Like They're trying to rush down the field. Take, they need to take their time and read the defense and see what the defense is offering them. Third and eight for the Tigers here. There's a snap. Looks like he's going to drop back to pass it. Oh, not seeing anybody. He's going to throw it downfield to number 15. Looks like he was called out of bounds on that one, though. It'll be fourth down and eight, and we'll have to see the Tigers punt again on their second drive. Destrehan's defense making another good stop, giving their offense the ball back. Hornville's offense being able to move down the field a little bit better on that drive since the last drive. I'm optimistic to see how they build momentum here. Destrehan's offense has come into this game ready to play, knowing that this would be a tough crowd to play in, but they don't care about that because they, ha they feel confident knowing that they are undefeated right now at ATM. Well, Hornville's only 1-2. and two. Coach Marcus Scott did say that his players were worried about the game and not going to react to Hornville's confidence here. Well, there's the kick. And Destrehan's going to be put at the 20. No, 29 there. But there is a flag on the play, so we'll see what that's called for. That was a good punt by the punter of Hawnville. The punter being Miles Borey. That was a really good punt. Probably about 50-yard punt. That's really good for a high school kicker. Seems like there was a roughing the kicker called on Destrehan. And it looks like the Hornville Tigers. will get the ball back, actually. That's a huge advantage for Hornville right here. Is their first and 10 at the 45. Basically, Destrehan is giving them four extra downs. And so I have eight downs to go with, basically. Oh, there's a snap. He's going to choose to carry the ball, but quickly brought down by Destrehan's defense. A gain of about two yards, and we're now second and eight for the Humble Tigers. They got the better field position now, and they got a gift from Destrehan. Let's see if they can capitalize off of it. Hopefully they can capitalize on something here. 
looks like the Destrahan Wildcats are about to play another man, possibly. And, yes, they are. This Destrahan team is playing a lot of man, which means the coach has a lot of trust in his defense. We are seeing the, the confidence in Destrahan's defense here. Hopefully we can see something for Holmes' offense as there's a snap. He's going to run it, but quickly brought down by Destrahan's defense again. That's the confidence we're talking about right there, reading the field and executing perfectly. That was a good play by number 91, and number 91 being Jiren McCall. Second time we've called his name. He's got two key plays of a loss of yards for a run play. Good for him, and that will be third and eight for the, for the Tigers. Long way to go. Let's see if they can do it. That was a loss of one yard on that snap there, and they're getting ready. Hornville needing to make something happen here. Destrahan's defense not really allowing them to. Oh. Looks like there's going to be a timeout on the play. Looks like there's a heat and humidity warning on the field here, so they're going to take a water break. Let's take a moment to discuss the coach the kit of the Hombo Tigers, who played quarterback for the Destrahan when he was in high school, and now he's coaching against the Destrahan Wildcats. I wonder how he feels for this game, Etienne. I think he's coming into this game with a unique perspective on this game, being on both sides of the ball, coaching and playing in the game. He knows exactly what his players are thinking here and exactly how to coach them through this moment. Both Destrahan and Hombo, coming off wins last week, both have momentum coming into this game because they feel a lot better knowing they have a win on their on their roster on their schedule. But it seems like Testrahan is coming to ready to play more than what Hornville has. I know Hornville after that win at home last week is feeling a little bit more at easy at home in this home crowd, but Destrahan not making it easy on them at all. As both teams take the field again, getting ready for the snap. Third and eight for the Tigers here. Man in motion, there's a snap. Is gonna drop back to pass it. So number nine, number nine receiving it and picking up a couple extra yards there. That was a great throw by Ryan Gregson. That was a good throw by Ryan Gregson to number nine being Calvin Smith, the running back out of the backfield. It would now be first down for the Humble Tigers. If they can keep plays up like that, they can get back in this game. Yeah, moving down quite moving down field quite swiftly on that one. I'm hoping they can execute on that amazing play. As I Destrahan is playing another man. Looks like they've been playing a man all day. As they're getting ready for the snap. There it is again. Ryan, quick pass, but looks like it's gonna be an ink. Oh. Looks like it's going to be a loss of yards there. It looked like it was a behind the it was behind the quarterback when he tried throwing it, which means if he were to drop it, it would be a fumble because it's behind the quarterback. So that's why it wasn't incomplete. It was a fumble. So now it's instead of it second and ten, it is now second and twelve for the Hall of Tigers. Looks like there's a little bit of confusion on Hornville's side here. That's not what they're looking for here. They need to be confident going down this field with Destrahan's defense. As they're ready for the snap, there it is. He's going to hand it off, but no room to work with there as Destrahan's defense brings him down quickly. A gain of no yards, and it'll now be third and 12 for the Hornville Tigers. And as you can see, Coach Laquette on the sideline not happy with what this team is doing this, this game right now, Etienne. Not happy at all. It looks like the Destrian is playing man defense again. But getting ready for the snap. There it is. Ryan Gregson going to take the ball. Looks like he's looking downfield to throw. He throws, but it's just out of reach. So it would now be fourth and 12 for the Homo Tigers, and it looks like they will be trotting out their either punt team or field goal team. Oh, no, actually, no, they're going to keep their offense on the field, actually. 
They're going for this on a long fourth and 13. Very risky and very risky move by Coach Laquette. Yeah, they're going to kick the ball here, Hayden. I think they're going to play it safe here and try and put some points on the board. This is a long field goal for the kicker. Let's see if he can make it. There's the kick. It's long. And it's good. Hondo putting some points on the board. That is a nice victory for them right there. Small, but hopefully building some momentum on that one. It sucks that the Homeville, Homeville Tigers did not, they didn't want a field goal. They weren't aiming for a field goal. They're aiming for a touchdown, but they'll take three points any day against a good team like this. They need the points. I'm sure they're going to turn that small victory right there into some momentum and hopefully hold the Wildcats here. Humble needing those points right there to get themselves back in the game because Destrahan going on their two offensive drives, scoring both touchdowns. Humble only on one on, on two drives, only scoring three points, but they'll take the three points because they need these points against a good Destrahan team like this. As we get ready for the kick here. There's the kick. It's long. Destrahan choosing to receive the ball. They're going to run it, get some. Oh, there's a flag on the play, though. It might be a holding call on the return team, so this might go back 10 yards from the spot. I see some words being exchanged on the field here. I hope that those are kind and, you know, but. I like to see the school spirit here and see both teams clashing here. There's an illegal block in the back, so they'll push him back 10 yards. It will now be first and 10 for the Fighting Wildcats. Looks like at the 16 yard line. Not the 16, the 11 yard line. We know from Destrahan's previous games that they're, start, they're struggling with their penalties here. In their first game, they had 15 alone, so. Um, Kind of concerned to see how they play out through the rest of this game. As there's a snap, he's going to hand it off. Oh, but quickly brought down. That was a good play, but number 90 being Nazir Miller. No, not Nazir Miller. Reed Howard. Excuse me, Reed Howard. Good play by him. It would now be second and 10 for the Destrian Wildcats. as they're getting ready. There's a snap. Looks like he's gonna drop back to quick pass it to number eight. Mm. A gain of no yards again. It'll be third and 10 for the Homeville, not Homeville Tigers, for the Destrahan Wildcats. A good stand by Homeville's defense. It's gotta get one more stop and they can possibly get the ball back to their offense. Destrahan Wildcats third and ten here. And there's a snap. He's going to drop back to pass it. It's a long one. Still in the air. Looks like it's going to be an incomplete pass there. It was a good throw by Jackson Fields. It's just out of bounds, which means unfortunately it can't be a catch. But Good stand, forcing no yards on four on three plays, and Homeville's defense can give the Homeville's offense the ball back. Let's we'll see what Homeville's offense can do to what their defense is doing. That's the first stop we've seen by Homeville's defense tonight. Hopefully more to come, but hopefully even more importantly, Homeville's offense can capitalize on this moment. Matthew Beatty set back to return.
There's a kick. It's a high one. Matthew Beatty receiving the ball. Quickly brought down at the 40-yard line. Hollow's got great fear position here, already on Death Strand's side of the field, only having to go 40 yards to get a touchdown here and possibly making the score 14 to 10. Hollenville having a great opportunity here. It's first and 10 on the 40. So hopefully they can do something with the ball here. I know it's going to be a slow start to build momentum here. As the momentum has been crushed a little bit, but hopefully we can see them slowly building on this. So far on the Destrehan defensive side, they've been playing a lot of man, and it has been working. So I feel like they're going to stick with that until Hollenville can find a good read, good read that they can figure out how to beat the man. But so far, Hollenville hasn't figured out a good way to beat the man. There's a snap. He's going to hand it off, but Destrehan's defense is going to quickly bring him down on that one. It will now be second and 12 for the Hollenville Tigers. A loss of two yards. Good stand by the defensive line of the Destrehan Wildcats. See if Hollenville can get more yards after losing two. As they're getting ready for the snap, Destrehan still playing man here. There's a snap. He's going to drop back to pass it. Long one. Oh, that's going to be a flag. That's going to be a flag. And it looks like it's going to be a pass interference on the Destrehan side of the defense. But to me, but to me, Etienne, it didn't look like he meant to pass interference. And it looked like he was trying to play the ball. That's what I saw. So we'll see what the referee makes here. They did wave the flag on that one. Wave off the flag on that one. They have laid the flag, laid the flag off, and to me, that's the right decision because the defense, the defensive player was trying to play the ball. He wasn't playing to defend the person. If he would have hit him just a little bit sooner, that flag flag might have passed, but it won't. It looks like the humble coach is talking to the referee, not happy with the call. Of course, he's not. If that flag would have passed, that would have put him in great field position here. Smart coach, smart decision here by Coach Laquette. It will now be third and 12 for the Honville Tigers, and let's see what they can scheme up here to try and get the first down to inch their way towards the end zone. There was two flags thrown on that play, so it's odd to see that it's going to be uh, waved off, but... You know, it's up to those refs out there, and they did decide to wave off the flag. Third and 12 here for Hornville's offense. Coach Uquette still not happy on the sidelines there, but. There's a snap. Looks like Ryan Gregson stepping his throw. Throw it to a quick pass to number six. And he's going to gain a couple extra yards on that one. It would now be fourth and eight for the Hornville Tigers. And we'll see what Coach Uquette does here. Will he go for it or will he try the long field goal again? Last time. They made the field goal, so he might trust his kicker again and see if he can do it again. But so far, it looks like Hanbo is going to go for it. They're going to kick him. Hanbo running down the play clock on this one. There's the quick snap. Oh, that's going to be botched, and Destrehan's going to capitalize on that, bringing Ryan Gregson back. Was not a good snap and was not a good handle by Ryan Gregson, forcing the ball to go behind him, and he was not able to throw it off because the defensive line got to him already. It would now be first and ten for the Wildcats. Huge stop by them to force a fourth down, a fourth and downs, and now let's see if they can capitalize off that turnover.
And there's a snap, fake throw deep. Jacksonville takes an off. A gain of about eight yards, I'd say. So second and two now for the Destrehan Wildcats. The QB keep. Jacksonville's taking the ball and he will be brought down just beyond the first down line. There's a flag on the play though. Looks like Jackson Jacksonville's helmet's off, so this might be called for a face mask, which means Yep. Four on to the head. So that means fifteen extra yards for the for the uh Destraham Wildcats. Gives them puts them in great field position here. bringing the ball all the way to the 29-yard line. If Destrehan can score here, that will put even more momentum on their side. Hombo will have to fight and climb the way up with only three quarters left to go. Give me a false start on the offense. Now will be first and 15. There's a snap, it's a play action pass. Jacksonville throws it and it's picked off by the Hornville defense. He's been turning it back. Yeah. Oh, there's a flag on the play though. Yeah. So, so it looks like Hornville's still gonna get the ball back but there was a blind side block apparently. That's what it looked like from up here on the booth. Yep, it's a blindside block by the Humble's defense on the return. Good play by the defense, though, causing a pick after giving up great field position to the Wildcats. Now let's see if the offense can capitalize on that turnover. First and 10 for the Hanville Tigers. Let's see if they can skew up on this drive. Here's a snap. It's a handoff to the running back. Gain, gain about five yards, and that will be the end of the first quarter with the Wildcats beating the Tigers 14 to three. Hanville will start with the ball on the 25 yard, on the 20 yard line with a second and five to start the second quarter. Let's take a moment to discuss Humble and Destrehan's schedule. Destrehan coming into the season 3-0, while Humble is 1-2. Humble winning their last game, getting their first run of the season, looking to make it their second straight win against their arch rival Destrehan Wildcats, while the Destrehan Wildcats are coming into this game undefeated and looking to beat, defeat the Humble Tigers, advancing their winning streak to four games and being undefeated, making it 4-0, and they'll be looking real good if they win this game. Or we could see an upset by the Humble Tigers to end the winning streak of the Wildcats.
Hombo's offense takes the field. Destran's defense is on the field, and we are ready to go in the second quarter. Second and five for the Hombo Tigers. There's a snap. It's a handoff to the running back, number nine. Brought down immediately. It will be a gain of no yards or about one yard. It would now be third and five for the Humboldt Tigers. Let's see if they can pick up five yards for the first down. If to me, if they were not to pick this up, that would not look good on the defensive side of Honvo because they gave the ball back to Honvo, but they can't capitalize it on this drive if they don't get it right here. To hand out to the running back. And it will be, oh, he's getting pushed back. Oh, he got pushed forward. And it will be a first down. What an effort by number, by number nine of the Humboldt Tigers being Calvin Smith on a great push by the offensive line to help him get that first down. He got pushed back just behind the first down line, but then the offensive line pushed him forward and gained that extra two yards to give him the first down. First and 10 at the 26 yard line. Here's a snap to hand off to the running back. Gain of about a yard, second and nine. Defensive line stood up against the O line really well. And I still see some man defense against the. Humboldt Tigers. That means the that means the defensive coaches are putting real trust on their players. And so far, they can keep that trust because only allowing three points is pretty good. Nine minutes and fifty-five seconds left in the second quarter. No running backs in the backfield. Guy in motion, there's a snap, and it's a handoff to number five. And he could not get the corner on number three. Good, that was a good tackle. That was a good tackle by number three. Number three being Kalad Cobbins. It would now be third and 11 for the Humble Tigers. Let's see if they can pick it up here. Wait, oh, yep, false start. That pushed the Humble Tigers back even more and that behind five yards. Makes it third and 16. Very hard for the Humble's offense to pick this up right here. Let's see if the defensive, let's see if the Destrahan defensive coaches still want to put him in man and risk a deep play or put him in zone to keep the safe option, hopefully to make him throw it underneath to not get the first down. And it looks like they will be playing more man. So that just shows they're playing, they trust, the Dest they trust their defense because they're, um, playing man on third and 16 is very risky, but it seems like they want to do it because they trust their defense. Almost picked off by number 10. Undercut that route. Braylon Cryer undercut the route. Almost picked it off, causing an almost an interception. But it'll be fourth down, and Honvo will be forced to punt after giving up, after the defense giving the ball back on a turnover. Number five, Anthony Robinson, the third, set back to a turn. The punt for the Destrian Wildcats.
Punt is high. Oh, the fumble. Oh, he picks it back up, though. So that was a good good break by the Death Strand Wildcats. Fumbling the ball, but Anthony Robinson the third, picking the ball right back up, giving the Death Strand's offense the ball back still. We'll see if Homo's defense can stand the Death Strand's offense after forcing a turnover last time. Or will Death Strand's offense become ready to play after giving up a turnover to the Homo's defense? Here's a snap, the run, and it looks like he, oh, he's still going, he's still going, and he is tackled by around the 37, 36-yard line. A good, a good run by number five, but there's a flag on the play. And it's a holding on the offense. This will be, this is a bad break for the Destrian Wildcats, bringing it back 10 yards after a good run. Now will be first and 20 for the Destrian Wildcats. The safeties of Hollow playing real shallow. Here's a snap, play action pass, a quick pass. Oh, oh, this might be a touchdown. He's still going. He's still going. He's to the 20, the 10, touchdown. Number eight being Johnny Thiel the fourth. It was a quick pass slant, touchdown. Destrehan Wildcats. It is now 20 to three over the Hollow Tigers. Destrehan looking real sharp on offense in this game, scoring three touchdowns on four drives. Actually, no, scratch that. Five drives. Scrap on five drives. That's really good. Good execution, too. Here's the kick, and it is up in the uprights. It is good. 21 to 3. Testrahan running over the Humble Tigers. 21 3. This does not look good for the Humble Tigers. Looks amazing for the Destrahan Wildcats. Let's see if Humble's offense can score on this drive right here, because if they don't, that will put more and more and more momentum on the Destrahan Wildcats. That strand special teams coming on the field really quick. That just shows that shows us that they are ready to play, knowing their team is up 21-3. Humble's jogging out onto the field. They are not happy while Destrahan is living the life right now, winning 21-3 over their arch rival. And here's the kick. It's a high one, but not very long. It will be taken by number two. He's got some space. He's got, he's still got some space, and he'll be tackled around the 38-yard line, but there's a flag on the play. Another flag. We've been seeing a lot of flags today in this game. It looks like they're going to wave off the flag. It'll be first and 10 for the, for the Humboldt Tigers at the 38-yard line.
First and 10 at the 40-yard line for the Humble Tigers. 7.54 left in the second quarter. Here's a snap. Drops back. Throws it. And it's complete at the 50-yard line. That should be a first down. Good catch by Karan Henderson. And it's a handoff to number nine, and he runs up the middle. And he's still going, and he gets the first down again. Two plays, two first downs, 210 plus yards. Makes it another first and 10 for the Humble Tigers. If they, if they can keep this up, they can get in the end zone, make it 21 to 10, only a two possession game. And the Humble Tigers do get the ball the start of the second half. So they can score here. That will put him 21-10, and not far behind the Wildcats. Man in motion. Here's a snap. It's a quick pass. It's caught, and he takes off. He's still going. He's still going, and he's tackled out of bounds around the 16-yard line. It was, a, it was a quick pass, and number zero being Kobe Lewis took off after a missed tackle, gained an extra 15, 20 yards, and now be first and 10 at the 16-yard line for the Humboldt Tigers, inching their way towards the end zone. Destran Wildcats having their back against the wall. Let's see if they can push off that wall, hopefully. Here's a stat. It's a handoff to number two and gets tackled immediately. What a play by number three being Collage Cobbins. I've been, we've been calling his name all night on defense. He's been having a really good game making key tackles. With six minutes and ten seconds left to go in the second quarter, Hom will have a second and nine to go. Here's a snap, and it's a handoff, and absolutely demolished number three being Kalaj Cobbins again. What a tackle! A loss of a yard. He shot out his hole and speared the running back basically what a tackle he showed some blazing speed coming out of the defensive line getting right past the offensive line and making the clutch tackle to force a third and long With third and 10 to go, the Homo Tigers inching their way to the end zone. Let's we'll see if they can capitalize on this great drive that they're having and score a touchdown because that's what they need. A field goal won't really cut it for the Homo Tigers against this really good Destrahan team that's up by 18 points. You got to aim for the end zone here. There's a snap. It's a pass. Oh, it's tipped and caught by number zero. It wasn't even attended for him, and he still caught it. It was a tip pass by, the, by his own teammate. Hommel getting lucky there, and it looks like it will be, I think it's just short of the first down. Oh, never mind. It is a first down. First down. 
Yes, first down for the Homo Tigers. It'll be first and goal. Converting on a third and ten. If they can score here, if they can score a touchdown here. Oh, looks like there'll be a timeout. If Homo scores a touchdown here, this will put them back in the game, knowing that if their defense gets a stop, they can come out into the second half only down by one possession if they score a touchdown on their opening drive. But based off time management, it looks like Destraham will definitely get the ball back to make some more statements before the, before the half is over. Two running backs in the backfield. Man in motion. And it's a wildcat formation, number nine, taking it in. And it is a touchdown for the Humble Tigers. It is now 21 to nine. Good offensive drive and good way to capitalize on it. 21-9, Humble all the way down by two possessions now. It's now a brand new ball game. And it looks like Humble will run a trick play formation here. And it's a toss, and they will get it. It is now 21 to 11. Destrahan being on top of the Humble Tigers, but weird formation, but it worked out. Now let's see if Destrahan's offense can capitalize on the Humble's offensive score. From up in the booth, I can hear the Hornville student section routing up at the Destrahan student section. That just shows how great of a rivalry this is. It, you, you, it's not, it doesn't get better than this. Friday night, Destrahan versus Hornville. Winner gets the bragging rights. Like, it doesn't get any better than this. And here's the kick, and it's a high and a long one taken at the five-yard line and tackled immediately, brought down at the 15-yard yard line, first and 10 for the Wildcats. Let's see what they can do after their defense giving up a touchdown to the Homa Tigers. Here's a snap, and it's a handoff to the running back, and he cuts up field, and he's still up, and he's still going. He's still going, and he's brought down at the 30-yard line, 31-yard line. Oh, there's a flag on the play. That was a good run by the running back, but let's see what the flag has to say.
and based off what we're seeing, it doesn't look like Destran's play that just happened will not ca Oh, yes, it, wait. No, it will not count. Personal foul on the offense. So Desrahan's good run will not count. That will force a first and ten, looks like it. Scratch that. It will force a first and twenty now for the for the Destrahan Wildcats. Twenty yards to go in three attempts. Let's see if they can do it. Oh, Hollow's defense put up another stop to give their offense the ball back. It looks like we are all ready to go. Hanlo's defense lining up in like a man coverage. Some people playing up and some people playing back. One running back in the backfield for the Wildcats. Here's a snap. It's a play action pass and it's a throw deep. And it is caught. First down for the Wildcats. What a catch. By number eight, number eight being Johnny Thiel the fourth. What a throw and catch! First and ten for the Wildcats. What a chunk play! What a statement made by the Wildcats. It's a handoff to number four. He's still going, but he oh he's still going. He is still going. Gain of about five yards. Good effort by the running back being brought back behind the line of scrimmage and then gaining him up strength to bring the whole defensive line basically up front. Gain of about four yards. Second and six for the Wildcats. Here's a snap. It's a handoff to the running back. Cuts up to the left. Gain of about two yards. It would now be third and three. No, gain of about three yards. It would be third and three for the Wildcats. Let's see if they can capitalize on a good offensive drive they're going right now. Third and three shouldn't be a problem for the Wildcats based off what their offense have shown what they've got tonight. Man of motion, here's a snap, and it's a handoff to number four again. And he will get the first down. That's what it looks like the referees are saying. First down, Wildcats. With three minutes and running, go on the second quarter. Destrahan inching the way towards the end zone to make a statement. Here's a snap. It's a play action. It's a quick pass to number two. And instantly read by number 12, number 12 being Matthew Beattie. That will be a loss of about six, five, six yards. Screenplay did not work out for the Wildcats. We'll see if they can do it on a second and 14 here. Man in motion. Here's a snap. It's a screenplay to the running back. Cuts out field. He's still going. And he's still going. He's at the 15-yard line. Still going at the 10, the 5, and brought down at the 4-yard line. What a play. 
What a cutback and what a run by number four after receiving the ball. Following his blockers, inching his way and causing a, and bringing up a first a goal for the Wildcats. The Wildcats can make it 28 to 11 here if they can score a touchdown, bringing more momentum onto their side. And here's a snap, and it's a handoff to the running back. And Chase Morales is there to make the play. Wait, it looks like, wait, Honvo's pointing. Honvo think it was a fumble, but the referees aren't saying it's a fumble, so. It will be second and, it will be second down for the Wildcats. And there will be a timeout on the field. 52 seconds left in the second quarter. If Destroy can score here, they can make it 28 to 11 before heading to the half. Honva won't have much time to go into the half. Only about, with, it'll be under 50 seconds for them to try and score a touchdown if Destroy had scored a touchdown on this play. Here's a snap, it's a play action pass. Throw into the end zone, touchdown. Again, number eight, Johnny Field, the fourth. He, I've been calling his name all night on offense. Touchdown, Wildcats, 27 to 11. With 50 seconds left to go in the first half, Destraham winning 27 to 11. That doesn't look so good for Hallville because they're not going to have much time to go down the field and try and score a touchdown here. And the kick is up. And it is good. 28 to 11. 28 to 11. Destrahan being over Hallville. We'll see what Coach Luquette thinks to his team, what they should do. 50 seconds on the clock with one timeout. We'll see what they plan here to see if they can score a touchdown or will they take a knee and go to the second half. And here's the kick. It's an all, oh, it's a squib. Picked up on the 28-yard line. Still going. 
Still going. And we brought down it on the 35 yard line. 38 seconds to go. We'll see if Hamo takes the knee or will they try and score. Hamo does get the ball to start the second half. So we'll see what Coach Laquette decides to do with his offense. And it looks like the Homo's offense will take it to a knee. It looks like they will take it to a knee. This home crowd not happy with what Coach Laquette just, just uh, told his offense to do. And that is the end of the first half. Destrehan Wildcats, 28 to 11 over the Hallville Tigers. We'll see what happens, who will have the more momentum coming up the second half.
attention, ladies and gentlemen. If you are facing cancer, a cancer survivor, or if you have lost a loved one to cancer, please stand up. This presentation is dedicated to you. Did you know that every minute, somewhere in the world, a woman dies from breast cancer? That's more than 1,400 women every day. And then, about 2,670 new cases of breast cancer women die from breast cancer. But 500 men die from breast cancer each year. The health science class is at the St. Charles Parish Satellite Center and wanted to put it together both sides of the river while also raising money and awareness for breast cancer. This is the 12th annual Pink Link competition. The goal was to see which side of the river could sell the most links and raise the most support. This is truly a community effort. Thanks to all who participated, especially the senior schools. We could not do this without your support. So as you can see on the football field, the Pink Links raise money for breast cancer. The campaign is put on throughout the month of September by the health science courses at the Satellite Center. As you can see, whoever has more Pink Link like, lines has raised more money on their side. The winner of the challenge is the East Bank Destran High School. They raised a total of $10,039.93, and the West Bank Humble High School released a total of $9,823.16, outstanding by both sides of the river. They raised a total of $19,863.09 to donate to the American Cancer Society. Yes, you heard that right. Nineteen thousand eight hundred sixty-three dollars and nine cents.
Welcome back to the second half of the Humble versus Destrehan game, Battle of the River. Coming into the second half, Destrehan being beating the Humble Tigers 28 to 11. Humble's getting the ball to show the second half, and we'll see who has played a lot better. And the kick is underway, and it's a short kick taken by one of the other linemen. And it will be tackled around the 32-yard line, 31-yard line. First and 10 for the Hornville Tigers, and let's see what they do to come out of the second half and start this drive off with a bang. Let's see if Destrehan keeps playing its man defense, and so far it looks like they will play their man defense. Still putting trust into that defense. Here's a snap. It's a play action pass for all to the right. It's a pass, and it's dropped. Michael Props has probably got to catch that ball with right in his hands. It would now be second and ten for the Humble Tigers. Looks like the Tigers will want a wildcat formation with three running backs in the backfield. Here's a snap. And Destraham was not fooled on that play. A loss of a yard, third and 11 for the Hornville Tigers. Not a good start. Not what Hornville wanted coming out of the second half. Two running backs in the backfield, man in motion. Here's a snap to hand off. No, it's a play action pass. Pass to number nine, and it's dropped. Another drop by Hallville. Two drops that should have been caught. Could have had a first down if he would have caught the ball, but drops it, and it's now fourth and 11, and the Tigers will be forced to punt on their opening drive on the second half. Not a good start by Hallville, but a great start for the defense on Destrehan. Here's a snap, and it's a powerful kick all the way to the 35 and out of bounds at the 35-yard line. That was a good punt, and Destrehan would now get the ball up 28 to 11. If they could score here, they can almost put the game away with it being up 34, 35 to 11. How about Hombo's got to get a stop here. Here's a snap. It's a handoff to number four and tackled immediately. About a loss of a yard. It'll be second down for the Destrehan Wildcats. 
They're running a quick no huddle here. Try and catch the defense off guard. Sends the running back out in motion. It's a fake to him, and it's a pass to number eight. And Hombo's defense tackles him around the 35, 36 yard line. Gain of no yards. Hombo's defense was not folding that play on the quick screen. Third and nine for the Destrehan Wildcats. Hombo will be in a zone defense here. Three wide receivers to the right. Here's a snap. And it's tipped at the line of scrimmage. And it would now be fourth down for the Destrian Wildcats. And that will be forced to put on the punt team on the field. Hombo's offense will get the ball right back after a three and out. Good stand by the Hombo defense. Now, Hombo's offense has got to make up for it. They got a lot of scoring to do. But it's only the third quarter. They can still do it. Here's the snap and the kick. The Hombo people will let it go, and it gets a really good bounce for the Destrehan Wildcats, and it will be down at the 23 yard line. First and 10 for the Hombo Tigers. That was a good punt by the Destrehan kicker. And it's going to be handed off to number nine and tackled immediately. Gain of a yard, second and nine for the Hombo Tigers. Good stop by the Destraham D line. Nine minutes to go in the third quarter. Hombo losing to Destraham 28 to 11. If Hombo could score a touchdown here or at least a field goal, it would only be a two possession game, which can put him back in this game. Here's a snap. It's a deep shot, and it is picked off by number seven of the Destrehan Wildcats. Was not a smart decision by a, number 11, Ryan Gregson, and number seven, Ty Terrell with the pick. Destrehan's football, first and 10 at the 47-yard line. What a play by number seven, Ty Terrell, reading the quarterback's eyes and shifting over and picking the ball off and giving the ball back for the Destrehan Wildcats, giving the opportunity to make it 34, 35 to 11. Here's a snap, it's a play action pass. It's a quick pass to number eight. And he's still going and he's gone. He's at the 20, he's at the 10. And touchdown, Destrehan Wildcats. We've been calling number eight all night. Johnny, Johnny Thiel the fourth. He's had three touchdowns tonight for the Destrehan Wildcats. He's been the star of this offense tonight. And now Destrehan is up 34 to 11 over the Hornville Tigers. Man, has Destrehan's offense and defense come to play tonight? And here's the kick, and it's 
blocked. 34 to 11. Good special teams play by the Tigers. With eight minutes and 20 seconds to go in the third quarter, Destrehan up 34 to 11 over Hanville. Destrehan side of the football field looks amped up, excited that their team is winning. On the other hand, Hanville side does not look too happy knowing that knowing that their team is losing 34 to 11. Both the Hanville sideline and the Hanville student sections are not too happy right now, but on the other hand, Destrehan is living the dream right now beating their arts rival. Hanville will get the ball back. Let's see what they can do. Ryan Simmons and Chase Brooks set back to receive the kickoff. And the kick is off. And it's a very short kick. Oh, confusion on the offense, but taken. He's still going. He's still going. Flag on the play. Taken down around the 36 yard line. But there's a flag on the play. And it's going to be a legal block in the back on the return team. That will push them back even more. First and ten for the Hallville Tigers. They basically have the score a touchdown here. If they don't, they can, they're putting themselves out of this game because Destrehan's offense has been tough to stop all night. It's been a challenge for Hallville's defense. Destrehan is in a man-to-man -man defense. One running back in the backfield, man in motion. And here's a snap. Oh, and there's a flag on the play. Looks like a false start in the offense. I'll push him back five more yards, putting him to the 10-yard line. First and 15 for the Humboldt Tigers. Nothing is going right for the Humboldt Tigers in the second half. Let's see if they can fix it on this drive by scoring a touchdown. Looks like there's some confusion on the homeless side. Who has off and on? They figured it out. Here's a snap. It's a handoff to the running back. Cuts to the left. Cuts to the right. Good move and gets tackled around the, around the 18 yard line. A gain of about eight yards. It will be second and seven for the Humboldt Tigers. Good run play by number nine, Calvin Smith. Looks like the defense is in a man-to-man. -man. And here's a snap. It's a handoff to number nine. And he burst through a hole, and he's still going. Cuts to the left and tackled at the 43-yard line and a flag on the play. This might be a face mask or a horse collar call or forearm to the head. But most likely, it's going to be against Destrehan. And it's a personal foul face mask call on the Destra hand. And I'll give Hombo an extra 15 yards.
And here's a snap. It's a handoff to number nine. And a gain of about four or five yards. Second and second down for the Humble Tigers. This drive is looking promising for them. Hopefully they can capitalize it with a touchdown here or with a defense of Destrahan force them to not be able to score a touchdown. Destrahan's got all the momentum on their side with, uh, with half the quarter gone in the third quarter. Six minutes and 40 seconds to go. Destrahan's up 34 to 11. Hallville's got to have a miracle in order to come back here. Ryan Gregson scrambles. Oh, he takes a good hit. And is out of bounds around the 30, 31 yard line. And it should be, it will be a fourth down for the Honolulu Tigers, I'm pretty sure. Third and two for the Humboldt Tigers. Here's a, and here's a snap. It's a handoff to number nine. Burst through a hole and gets the first down. First and 10 for the Humboldt Tigers at the 28 yard line. This drive looks pretty promising. Hopefully they can capitalize it. With 28 yard marks to go, 28 more yards to go. We'll see if Humboldt can put it in the end zone or have to settle for a field goal. And there'll be a timeout on the field. Even though Destrahan is out 34 to 11 over the Homo Tigers, Homo student section, no one has left. That just shows that the school spirit is still alive and they still believe in their team. But Homo has got to keep making them believe by keep getting the balls, create turnovers, execute drives. So far that hasn't happened, but so far this could be the start of it because they're inching their way into the end zone. Let's see if they can score a touchdown here. Looks like the Destrahan defense is playing man-to-man. -man. One running back in the backfield. Person 10 for the Humble Tigers. Man in motion. Here's a snap. It's a quick pass. Incomplete. Good defensive play by number seven. Tied to rail with the pass deflection. Second and 10 for the Humble Tigers. Seems to be a little bit of confusion on the Hallville side. Substitution issues. Seems that they got it all figured out now. Second and 10 for the Hallville Tigers. Here's a snap. It's a handoff to number nine and gets about three yards. It would be third and seven for the Hallville Tigers. If Hallville were to not score a touchdown here, that would end their amazing drive that they've been putting on right now in the second half. Second drive, too. One running back in the backfield. Here's a snap. Drops back. It's a screen pass. Number nine gets it. And fumble on the field. And picked up by Destrahan. And that's a fatal mistake by number nine, Calvin Smith. 
fumbling that ball and giving the ball back to Destrahan. And it looks like Destrahan is running away with this game and it's only the third quarter. But you gotta give them credit. They've come out and played ball. It will be first and 10 at the 17 yard line for the Destrahan Wildcats. Two running backs in the backfield and Hallville's playing a zone defense. It's a handoff to the running back. Number four takes it and gains. Oh, he's still going, and he's still going. Gains about eight yards, eight or nine yards. Second and short for the Wildcats. Very manageable for them based off what their offense has done today, and their offense has played amazing, incredible. Second and one for the Destrian Wildcats. Two running backs in the backfield. Zone defense. And it's a handoff to number four again. And he takes off and he's still going. And he's to the 40. He's to the 50. And he's tackled around the 45 yard line. What a run. Good blocking by the O line to create a hole for him. Shane Lee has been running it all over Humble's defense tonight. With a, with a couple of key rushes, giving them first downs on all those rushes. This Destrehan team looks well executed and well prepared against this Hombos defense. And it's a handoff to number five. Cuts to the right. He's still going and gets the first down, I believe, for the Wildcats. And first down, Wildcats. Timeout, Humble Tigers. With three minutes and 21 seconds left to go, Hommel not putting up any points on the board, and Destrehan scoring a touchdown here, has the chance to put up another touchdown with only 35 yards to go. Inching the way towards the end zone, Hommel's back is almost against the wall, and if they're against the wall, it's very dangerous because this Destrehan team has been great in the red zone. Offensive, defensive, take the field. Hand off to the running back, and he's still going. Gains about five yards. It'll be second and five for the Destrehan Wildcats. So far in this second half, every play that Destrehan has run has been usually about five plus yards. That's exactly what the defense does not want. They don't want these five yard plays every time they run the ball. Two running backs in the backfield, man to man defense for the Hanville Tigers. It's a pass to number nine, caught. Gets some extra yards down at the 21 yard line. First and 10 for the Wildcats. Two minutes and 35 seconds and rolling. Thank you. 
Here's a snap. It's a handoff to the running back. Number nine chasing the outside. He's still up and he's still going. Cuts to the left. And he's tackled around the two yard line. But there's a flag on the play and it's holding. That's a bad break for Destrahan. Had a really good run and it's going to be brought back because of a holding. So instead of it being first and goal on the two yard line, it's going to be first and 20 on the 37 yard line, 38 yard line. Two running backs in the backfield. Here's a snap to play action pass. To pass to number four and he catches it and he's off and running. Following his blockers and he's still going. He's up and touchdown Destraham Wildcats. Number four being Shane Lee. Touchdown 40 to four, no 40 to 11. Excuse me, 40 to 11. Destraham Wildcats over the Hallville Tigers. It's safe to say that Destrahan is more than likely to be 4-0 after this game. Here's a snap. Oh, it's mishandled, and it's a fake, and not what Destraham wanted, but no worries for them, with them being up 40 to 11. Hanville's got to have a miracle here to come back and win this game. Still, still can happen, but very unlikely, but we'll see how this game pans out in the fourth quarter with only a minute and 44 in the third quarter. And the kick is off. High and short kick taken by number two, Chase Brooks. Cuts to the left, and he's got some space, but is tackled around the 31-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Humble Tigers at the 31-yard line. We'll see what Coach Laquette in this offense has to plan for this drive right here, with them being down 40 to 11 with only a minute and 34 seconds left in the third quarter. This is a must touchdown drive for Hanville. Must. Destrahan's defense, though, has been amazing. It's been a real tough challenge for Hanville to even push the ball downfield. Destrahan's defense has come ready to play. Man to man defense for Destrahan. One running back in the backfield. And here's a snap, hand off to the running back. And he takes off to the right and gets tackled for a gain of a yard. This defensive line by Destrahan has played lights out tonight, barely giving up any rushing yards to the running backs. And on the defensive line side of Destrahan, that's exactly what you want to see. And for the offensive line on Hallville, that's not what you want to see. Second and nine for the Hanville Tigers at the 32-yard line. 
One running back in the backfield, man-to-man -man zone. Man-to-man -man hand off to the running back, and he gets sworn behind the line of scrimmage, loss of, a two, loss of two yards. Third and 11 for the Humboldt Tigers. Let's see what they'll scheme up here to convert this third and 11. And he's a snap, drives back, and gets sacked. What a tackle by number three. Number three being Kalaj Cobbins. We've been calling his name all night on defense. He's been playing lights out. He's probably been the player, the player of the best player on the defense, basically. He's had two two amazing tackles and a sack in this game. Good for him and good for the Destrehan Wildcats. And that will be a wrap of the third quarter. One more quarter to go in the Battle of the River game, Destrehan being up 42-11. Here's a snap, and the punt is off. High, really high punt. Fair catch by the by the Destraham player, and the ball will be at the 50-yard line. Good field position to start the to start the drive for the Destraham Wildcats. It's a handoff, and he is tackled around the 49-yard line. That might be a flag in the play, but it doesn't look like the rest will call it. A gain of a yard, or a gain of two yards, actually. It'll be second and eight for the Destrehan Wildcats. Second and nine, scratch that, second and nine. Looked like it was a little toss shovel play to like my, a guy in motion, but Humble was not fooled. Let's we'll see what Destrehan has to offer for the Humble's defense on a second and nine. Got the 49 yard line. Here's a snap. It's a handoff to number four. Burst through a hole and gets tackled from behind. Gain of two yards. It will be third and seven at the 47 yard line for the Destrehan Wildcats. Here's a snap, drops back, quick pass to number four. Spin moves and he gets tackled immediately. That was a nice tackle by Chase Morales. It'll be fourth down for the Wildcats. 
and they will be forced to punt. Finally, some light has come out of the Hombos defense. Matthew Beatty and Chase Brooks head back to receive the punt. Thank you. Here's the snap, and the kick is off, and it's a nice punt called back by Matthew Beatty and runs and gets tackled around the 10-yard line. That was a good punt by number 34, the punter being Caleb Johnson. Punting it from the 45-yard line to about the 5-yard line. That would make it about a 50-yard punt. Pretty good. First and 10 for the Humble Tigers at the 10-yard line. Scratch that, the 12-yard line, the 12-yard line. Fourth quarter, 10 minutes and 14 seconds to go in the Battle of the River game. We'll see how these last 10 minutes will pan out. Here's a snap. It's a play action pass roll out to the left and incomplete. Not a good throw by Ryan Gregson. It hasn't really been a Hallville's offensive date today. Destrahan's defense has come ready to play. And the man has been working. They've been playing man-to-man -man all day, and it's been killing Hombo's offense. Hombo can't find a read to it. That just shows that Destrahan has trust in his defense. And it's a snap. It's a handoff to the running back. Cuts left and gets tackled immediately. Loss of two or three yards. Third and long for the Hombo Tigers. Just under 10 minutes left. Third and 13 for the Hallville Tigers. Here's a snap, it's a play action pass. Quick pass to number six and it's incomplete. They had a defender in his face, number 91. Number 91 being Jaron McCall, who's eight, whose name we've also called a lot tonight. Up in Ryan Gregson's face, forcing a disruption of a throw, making it an incomplete, fourth and 13 for the Hommel Tigers and another punt. Hommel has yet to score any points in the second half. Destrahan's defense, giving up 11 in the first half, hasn't given up a single point in the second half. That just shows the improvement of what their coaches had said to them during halftime. Here's a snap and the punt. High punt and let go by the, de oh, he picks it up and takes it back. He got lucky he didn't mishandle it, but good defensive play, good special teams play by Hallville. The ball will be at the 46-yard line. Destraham will get the ball with nine minutes and seven seconds left to go in the fourth quarter. And it looks like Destrahan will put in their backup QB, number 14 being Braden Finnerty. And it's a burst, and he's still going. He's to the 30, he's to the 20, and he's tackled around the 10 yard line. One explosive run by number 25, I believe. 
Number 26, number 26 or 25? Number 25. Number 25 being Jaden Bailey. What a run by him. It will now be a first and goal at the 10-yard line. Here's a snap, whistle, there's a blown whistle, and timeout, Destrahan. Eight minutes and 18 seconds left to go. Destrahan up 40 to 11 over the Tigers. Based off how much time is left in this game and the score, Destrahan should improve their score, not score, should improve their record to 4 and 0, win streak being 4. That's really impressive. While Hawk will, will probably more than likely fall to 1 and 3 unfortunately, with their next opponent being East St. John. Not a t not a, like a not a huge break for them. East St. John's also a really good football team they will have to face on the road next week. First and goal for the Destrehan Wildcats. Looks like Hawaii will play a man-to-man -man defense. Timeout Hallville now. Two two back-to-back -back timeouts. First and goal for the Destrehan Wildcats. And now they will definitely be able to run a play because you cannot call back-to-back -back timeouts. So we'll see what happens on this play right here. One running back in the backfield. Man in motion. Oh, it's a mishandled snap. Run quarterback takes off and might and gets tackled around the seven, six-yard line. He got thrown out of bounds. Looked like a face mask or a horse collar, but the referees didn't call it. So it will be now second and goal around the seven, yard, seven, six yard line for the Wildcats, inching their way into the end zone. One running back in the backfield. Two wide receivers set on both sides. Man to man defense by Hawville. Man in motion. Toss up to number 11. Cuts inside, but gets tackled immediately. A loss of a yard. It will be third and goal around this seven yard line. Eight minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. Here's a snap. It's a quarterback keep run play. And he's still up. Didn't look like he got tackled. And he, got, he gets tackled around the four-yard line. Fourth and goal. 
will Dr. Hank go for it, or will they just set up for the field goal? Let's see, and it's looks like they will go for it. And they will send out their field goal team unit. Oh, wait, never mind. It's a timeout on the field. Timeout. Six minutes and 29 seconds left to go. Test your hand has a potential of extending their lead, making it 43, possibly 43, to 11. You just got to give Hanville, yeah, Hanville, you got to give uh, Test your hand a. Uh, credit what they've done tonight. Defense has allowed 11 points. Offense have scored 40 points. This has basically been all Destrahan. Unfortunately, Hanvo couldn't end their win streak most likely. Testerhan attempting the field goal. Here's the snap. The kick is up and it's blocked. And it will be Hanvo's ball around the two yard line. When Hanvo scored their, their first touchdown of the game, it was 21-11. to 11. Since then, Destrahan has ran away with this game, scoring 19 unconsecutive points over Hanville. Well, Hanvo has scored no points in the second half. Not a good second half out of what Coach the Cat wanted out of his Hanvo Tigers. But Coach Scott's Wildcats wanted everything what they got. They got what they deserved. Whatever he asked for out of his offense and defense, he basically got it tonight. Here's a snap. It's a handout to the running back. And a gain of about a yard. Second and nine for the Homo Tigers at the five yard line. Timeout on the field. Second and eight to go.
Second and eight for the Homa Tigers. Here's the snap. It's going to be a handoff to number 13. Cuts to the left and gets tackled. Gain of about three yards. And it should be a third and five for the Homa Tigers. Five minutes and 43 seconds left to go in the fourth quarter. Man in motion. Here's a snap. It's a handoff to number 13. Cuts up the middle. And he will be just short of the first down. It'll be fourth and one, fourth and inches. And it looks like they will punt the ball away to the Destrian Wildcats. Here's the punt. And, uh, oh, muffed. And Destran still got the ball. But there's a flag on the play. Here's the snap, and it's a handoff to number 24. Cuts up the middle. He's still up and gets tackled around the 29 yard line. Second and nine for the for the Destrehan Wildcats. Destrehan playing their backup quarterback, number twelve, Elisha Murphy. To hand off to number twenty-five, cuts to the right, cuts to the left, still going, still up, and gets tackled around the twenty-three yard line. It will be third. And about four for the Fighting Wildcats. Three minutes and 10 seconds left to go. Destrehan winning 40 to 11. With this win, Destrehan will be up, will be 4 0 with their still undefeated season going along. The season looks very promising for the Destrehan Wildcats. Here's a snap. It's a handoff. No, it's a play. It's a keep. The quarterback kept it. He's still going and gets tackled around this. Let's see the 
13 yard line, yes, 13 yard line. First and 10 for the Wildcats. Inching their way towards another touchdown. It's a handoff to number 25, and he bursts through the hole, and it's a touchdown. What a run by number 25, being Jaden Bailey. 46 to 11, Destrahan over the Humble Tigers. A minute and 54 seconds left to go in the Battle of the River game. Destrahan had to add some, some more points to make it more of a blowout game for them. If they make this extra point, it can be 47 to 11. Here's the snap and the kick, and the kick is up and the kick is good. 47 to 11, the Wildcats over the Tigers. Destrahan has beat Hanville every time they face since 2017. So that makes it, so 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 21, 22, that would make it six years now in a row that Destrahan has come out on top over Hallville. Hallville hasn't beat their arch rival since 2016. They gotta find a way to do it. But unfortunately, they cannot do it today with the Destrahan Wildcats winning 47 to 11 with just under two minutes left in the fourth quarter. The kick is up, and it will be taken around the five-yard line, and it is taken up field, cuts to the left, cuts back to the right, and it gets tackled around the 33-yard line. First and 10 for the Humble Tigers. A minute 45 left to go. There's a flag on the play, though. The referees are pulling on the Hanville side, so this might be coming back. Might be on the Hanville. Oh, looks like it's going to be a personal foul on Destrahan. So I give Hanville an extra 15 yards. More than likely, this will probably be Hanville's last drive of, this, of the game. Ball will be spotted at the 40 two yard line. Here's a snap, it's a handoff to the running back and gets swarmed immediately. Second down for the Hanville Tigers. Hanville's offense taking a little while to get the play. Looks like they finally got it now. Got a motion, 
and it's going to be a handoff to the running back. Takes it off to the left, and he's still going, and will be tackled around the 30, no, not a 30, the 46-yard line. Third down for the Humble Tigers. 40 seconds left to go. Here's a, here's a snap. It's a play action pass. Ryan Grissom takes off and just slides down. Oh, wait, that might be a flag. And no, not a flag. And that will probably be the last play. And that is a wrap of the Battle of the River game with the score, final score, 47 to 11. And Destrehan Wildcats are now 4-0, and the Homo Tigers are now 1-3. Both teams are now lining up in their respective lines to shake hands and congratulate each other on a good game. We're looking forward to this battle next year. Everybody's looking up to it. We will see you all next week. Good night.
shot the best of hands. Why not? No. Well, Eddie, are you confident? That It'll be it. hey CJ. CJ.
Haley, you're stupid. Talking to me. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for our post-game performance by the Pride of Destrahan. Tonight, the band will be performing their 2023 program, Pandora's Box. Drum major, Hayden Stoop. Is the band ready? You may take the field for your performance. Ladies and gentlemen, the pride of Destrahan. 